Hello, my fellow fasting foodie friend. You ask questions, I have answers. I'm gonna do a fun summer get ready with me. This was requested on a recent live and I thought, what the heck, it sounds fun to me. So I just got out of the shower, obviously. I have nothing on and I'm gonna get my face ready while I answer questions. I normally don't get ready down in my living room, but I have wonderful natural light here, perfect to film with. So let's go. These questions will pop up on the screen, but I'm gonna paraphrase them and efforts to not make this the longest video ever. Last time I did this, it was two like half an hour video. The first question Manda asked, do I usually stay at 20 hours? Um, what's my schedule on an up and down day? Do I still hit 20 hours? So my minimum is only 18 hours, not 20. However, and this is probably what you're thinking of, I do usually get closer to 20 to 22 hours on a daily basis. So on a regular, day though my minimum is 18 hours it's not 20. I just tend to go longer than that because that's what I like. On an up and down day I the down day I always make sure if I break my fast with the 500 calorie meal that I still get the 18 hours that's still a minimum no matter what so whether it's a down day or an up day a 500 calorie meal it is after at least 18 hours and then I do fast at least 18 hours again before the up day that's just for me because I like the standard. I like going 18 hours. So that's how I do it. I make sure I get at least 18 hours even on up and down days. That generally means that I'm eating lunch on the down day if I eat or a full day fast and then I'll start my up day at lunch again. And that way it's really easy to get the 18 hours because lunch to lunch is closer to 24 hours and it doesn't have to be exact. I sprayed in frizzies. I'm not a product person, like I use what I can readily, easily buy. I just like to put that in and I do feel like the John Frieda stuff helps. And I'm not gonna blow dry my hair because that's just too annoying to do while filming. I don't remember where I got this, I think TJ Maxx years ago, but I love it still, it keeps everything on my face. As I answer the next question, I'm putting on my Aldi day cream. I put the Aldi day and night cream on every single day. Also, if I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm also using my camera as a mirror, so sorry. Next question is from Keto Nito. Do I go off the rails and eat more sweets ever? Um, she mentions that that's her biggest problem, committing to one sweet a day. Do I go off the rails sometimes? Yes, I do. That is where time is my friend. When I restrict the time, I can only go off the rails so much, right? I do go off the rails. It's not very frequent. The longer I fast, I feel like it's less frequent that I go off the rails. There are still days where I eat more than I intend to or that make me comfortable. However, it's few and far between because when it happens, I realize it doesn't make me feel very good. And the more that I do behaviors that don't make me feel good, which is in great opposition to feeling great um, while I'm fasting or when I have a shorter eating window, and I continue to feel good, it just is less likely to happen again. Having those off the rail days, to me, is a learning tool. You're gonna learn that you don't like it, so you're gonna be less likely to do it. It's a great contrast to feeling great. So when it happens, like my most recent one, it wasn't actually about sweets. When it most recently happened, my husband and I had a late night date night, which it was a short eating window, but I just, the quality of the food I really felt crappy and I ate much later than normal. I had ice cream and I had chips and queso from Qdoba. And the funny thing is we used to do this a lot when I was overweight and when I wasn't fasting and I loved it. Like I, it wasn't something that I didn't feel good. I just didn't feel good often so it didn't really stand out. But now that I feel so good while I'm fasting and have these eating windows, when I ate at 11 p.m. and I had chips and queso and ice cream and I enjoyed it with my husband and the food was yummy. The next morning, I felt so awful in the morning. I told him, I was like, that ain't happening again for a long time, if ever again. And it wasn't because I'm not allowed or because I limit myself. It just didn't feel good and I don't want that again. So I 100% approach those days where it happens as a tool to mold future behaviors. You mentioned you have a hard time committing to one sweet a day. I could not do that. There are days when I make something and I eat more than what a single portion would be. And I do it without guilt. If I'm at my mother-in-law's house for a birthday gathering, she sometimes makes like three different desserts. I'll have a piece of cake and a cookie. Like I don't do it just because I can. I do it because I really want it. And it doesn't happen all the time, but I'm free to do it. I don't limit myself to one a day. I 
am not good at having limits as far as don't eat this. Um, the diet mentality was really awful for me. And I think that maybe having the one a day could be restrictive to you where then you again feel obsessive about what you're not having. So you select the one and then you think of all the other things that you're not having. So I would maybe focus on the time, enjoying the eating window and removing that one restriction might do for you what it did for me and allow you to not obsess about what you're not choosing. You can strictly focus on what's gonna make me feel good, what do I want, what is this eating window gonna look like, and without the rules, you're probably gonna find that you only select one sweet more often than not because you wanna feel good, you selected other things, you close your eating window, but you're not focusing on the one rule and then obsessing about the things you're not choosing. That is what I would do. My personality could be very different than yours, and that's why I think fasting can be different for different people. But personally, if I had a rule of one sweet a day, it would be very hard for me to live by it, even though most days I only eat a single sweet, if any. Does that make sense? So I would try to not have that rule and just see how you're doing with it. I'll be back. The dog will be out and probably a little louder than wine. Quick break for the puppy. I gave her a chew, so wish me luck. Hi, honey. Okay, so I use e.l.f. Sun Touchable. Someone messaged me on Instagram and told me about this. It's like a dupe of Glow Screen from Supergoop, and I do really like it, and it's much more affordable. It's 30 SPF, and it has like a slight tint and shimmer to it. I don't wear foundation or concealer almost ever, but I wear that every day, and I like the SPF on it. Especially in the summertime, I don't wear as much makeup as I do in the winter because I get a real natural glow to me. Okay, Saved by Grace asked, how long did it take to find success? I asked about the 20 hours, we already went over that. Do I keep my window open a certain amount of hours or do I just eat and close? So that's a good question. Um, first of all, it I lost weight right away and I feel very hesitant to say that because not everyone does that. So if you don't find success right away, it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It doesn't mean it's not working for you. It just means you're different than me. So my dad who fasts and he's been fasting almost as long as me at this point, took about six months to find success, but he's found a lot of success with fasting. And by success, I mean weight loss. He was feeling really good. He was feeling more in control of what he was eating. He was getting to enjoy his eating windows without dieting. There's a lot of benefit without weight loss. And he did um, about six months in, moved to OMAD and started to lose weight. Now he's playing with alternate day fasting. He's just continuing to learn about different ways that work for him and continuing the weight loss success. But he's felt successful the entire time. I did lose weight right away. I went from eating all day to a short eating window and I didn't change my diet, but I changed how much and how often I was eating. And I did, I, I lost all my weight within the first five or six months and I've maintained it since then. That's not the case for everyone, unfortunately. And there's not like a specific, if you don't hit this objective, you're failing. Are you feeling good? Are your clothes fitting different? Are you able to feel more in control of what you're eating? Are you able to enjoy your eating window without feeling guilty like you would on a diet? There are so many other benefits than weight loss, but I don't have a timeline I can give you. It's different for everyone. Hit 20-ish hours minimum, but it's not my goal. My goal is still 18 hours, but it is usually longer. Do I keep my eating window open for hours or do I just eat and close? If I know I'm done eating, I close my eating window. There is no um, leaving it open because I will keep eating. If my eating window is open, I will probably fill it with something. I don't have like a set time frame. Even as I'm doing this June challenge where I'm only eating one hour a day and 23 hours fasting, I'll close my eating window at 25 minutes if I want, or 40 minutes, because if I know I'm done and I'm satisfied, I just close it. There's no point for me to leave it open because time is my constraint, not my willpower. <laughs> and that's just a very honest answer. This video is sponsored by Element. I love adding Element to my day. I especially love adding the flavors into my eating window. They're great to mix in plain water, in flavored or unflavored sparkling waters, iced coffee, or even in a cocktail. Element uses a science-backed ratio of 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. This combination is made without sugars or dodgy fillers. I love taking this to stay hydrated, to keep me fueled, and to keep me from getting sore legs while I do longer fasts. 
Sore legs are something I used to battle before Element was part of my regular routine. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or to share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash fastingfoodie. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash fastingfoodie. Thank you so much to Element for sponsoring this video. And the next question is not a question. It's actually a request from Vicki. Vicki asked if I would add the times that I ate, like um, 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. In my, wind, or in my videos. I will try to do that. I can't promise you it'll be every time. I did make my short today as I'm filming this, and I added it into the corner. So I hope you like that and notice it. But I think it's a, a nice way to, as you mentioned, get a visual. So I will try to do that more regularly. I can't promise it'll be every time, but I do like the idea and I appreciate the suggestion. Just so you guys know, I'm using, this is the rose gold eyeshadow palette from e.l.f. I love metallic, neutral, browns, golds. I, I've been doing it since I was 13. On my eyes in some variety. I met with a Mary Kay consultant then and she said browns are good for blue eyes. I didn't wear makeup when I was 13 but that's when I learned it and so that's what I've always done. Except for I had a weird phase where I wore purple and I look back at those pictures. Why didn't someone tell me not to? Julia says how to not feel sick while fasting, how to not binge, and how to not think of food all day. First of all if you are brand new to fasting the adjustment period does not feel pleasant by any means. So I did not feel pleasant while I was adjusting, but that was about a week, maybe two weeks, where it was just a struggle. You're adjusting to not eating when you're used to eating. So that was a weird adjustment period, but I don't feel sick while I'm fasting. I honestly feel so good while I'm fasting, which I think makes it super easy to maintain. I always felt um, obsessive and very deprived. I was gonna say starving, but that was, that I obviously wasn't starving deprived while dieting. So I could pair it to that. And I don't feel that way. I feel good while I'm fasting once I've adjusted to the lifestyle. So I don't deal with, let's say, feeling sick. Um, at the beginning, when I was adjusting, the way I dealt with any poor feelings, I did take ibuprofen in my fast to deal with headaches. I was having headaches. And I drank a lot of ice water, iced tea, iced coffee. It was summertime when I was adjusting and then hot coffee. And I just, if I wanted, if I had the like urge to eat, again, adjusting is different. I would make myself a fresh drink and I drink and that's what I did. I still do that if I feel like, okay, it's not time to eat. Um, am I hungry? I'll make a fresh, like a different drink. So if I'm currently drinking hot coffee, I'll make a cup of ice water. If I'm currently having ice water, I'll make a new cup of coffee, something different to get me over that hump. Emmy's arguing with her bones, sorry. How to not binge and how not to think of food all day. So I'm gonna get to binging in a bit because it's another question, so we'll talk about that at the end. But how to not think of food all day. Oh, I've moved on, I'm putting eyeliner on. Um, this is Pharmacy. I usually use e.l.f., but Pharmacy is, it's kinda like a you buy into a club and you buy it half off, and I do really like the products, but I didn't like having to order a certain amount to keep whatever. I never sold it or anything. But their products work great, but literally the e.l.f. is just like this. But I found, I had some of these from an order. But I do like, if you ever run into the pharmacy brand, I like it. I thought this was e.l.f. when I was showing it to you though. I use e.l.f. But I don't find that I obsess about food like I used to when I was dieting because I don't feel deprived and to me that made the world of a difference. I still think about food a lot. I am excited for my eating window, you know, today. I had pizza last night for dinner and I'm having leftover pizza today. And this morning in the shower, I was thinking about the salad I'll make to go with it. It wasn't the same as when I thought of food all the time when I was dieting. Because I'm looking forward to it, it's joyful. And the longer I fast, the more that I'm almost always fasting. So I don't think of my eating window as much. I still look forward to it, but I think it's just more of a what you get used to. I spend so much time in the fasted state that food isn't the majority anymore, if that makes sense. But I do still think of it a, a fair amount. <laughs> I do the meal planning, I do the grocery shopping, I make the food, and I look forward to my eating window. I love going out to eat. I like to look at restaurants, menus ahead of time, but none of it's from like, I don't think, an unhealthy standpoint of like, 
Okay, what has the least amount of calories? What could, what would I still like to eat, but I won't feel bad about? It's none of the obsessive thoughts that I used to have. So to me, there's a big difference. And because I'm not dieting and I spend most of my time fasting, I really do think I think of food much less than I used to. We'll talk about the binging question at the end because there's another one and we'll just roll it all in. Cherry Spot says, was I asking if I was more strict or calorie counted did I calorie count when I first started? I honestly thought it was such a drastic life altering move to go from eating all day to a short eating window. I thought that was enough. And I'm really glad I did it that way because I have found massive success without feeling deprived. And I don't know that everyone could do it that way. I didn't add in pizza to my diet when I became a faster. I ate pizza before I was fasting. So just naturally not eating the same way all day and just doing it the same way in an eating window made a difference to me. And because of that, I was able to find success. I've never calorie counted except for on my down days because it's easy not to, to be honest. And it's more enjoyable not to. I don't want to count calories. Now, are there times where I'm curious how many calories are in something? The most recent time I can think of looking at calories was I was looking at pints of ice cream and deciding between two, and one had like 150 calories more than the other. Well, I went with the lower calorie one, not because I felt like I had to, but I honestly was kind of like, okay, a tipping point. What, which one am I gonna pick? And I'm like, well, if this one already has 150 less calories, I'll go with that. But it's not a a limits thing or feeling like I have to, but nope, my, my eating habits have been the same. Honestly, I think I eat better now than I did when I started because there are things I just don't like anymore. Like I don't like to eat Little Debbie's anymore and I used to love Little Debbie's. I don't eat chips as often because I just don't have as much room in my eating window. I prioritize eating foods that are like filling and satiating and that I really look forward to. And even though I still enjoy chips when I eat them, I don't think of or want them as much. So I feel like I eat better now, but it's not because I'm choosing to or counting calories. It's just a natural progression three years in. And this is actually a brand new CoverGirl palette. It's called the True Blend, True Blend Serving Sculpt Palette. You can see how much I used my last one. Obviously I use the blush and the highlighter the most. Again, not an expert here. I just do what works best for me. I can already say I'm gonna put more eyeshadow on though. I'm too distracted here. All right, the next question is from Susan. She says she's a newbie, just got past her 28 days, and she gave me the, the, the sample schedule she's thinking of. So, sorry, finding my cheekbone here. She's thinking of doing 24, three days a week. So a 20 hour fast, four hour eating window. 18, six, two days a week. And then on the weekend doing a um, no fast for one day and then a 16, eight on Sunday. So she's saying that weekends are harder for her and that she wants a little more freedom on the weekends and what do I think of that schedule? First of all, I think it's amazing that you are recognizing what's important to you. So the weekend, having a longer eating window being more important to you and prioritizing that and then having shorter eating windows on the week, I think is amazing. I think you should try it. If that's, if that's a schedule that is like appealing to you, works for your life, allows you to have the, the more freedom on the weekend, try it out. If you're finding that it's not successful, maybe do 16-8 on both days, Saturday and Sunday. An eight hour eating window is still pretty long. And if you have say breakfast plans one day, you can always have that eight hour eating window earlier in the day and fast longer. It doesn't have to be like the same time every day. But I think if you're interested in that as a schedule, I definitely think you should do it. And the cool thing is, and this is something I think people don't re like think of, what you try doesn't have to be what you do forever. You guys know I'm currently doing a one hour eating window every single day of June just to do it. Like, I'm not gonna do this forever. I'm really enjoying the challenge. I did ADF in April, alternate day fasting, and I've done keto for a month. You can try something, learn from it, see what you like about it, learn how to integrate it into your everyday without making the commitment to do it forever. You're not marrying the schedule. You're not stuck with it. Try it out, see how it works. But I think that sounds really good. You're prioritizing the weekend, which sounds important to you. You're having longer fasts during the week and you're doing what I think is important, changing it up. You're not having the same thing every day. The variety and the flexibility is gonna make it much more sustainable. And if you say, hey, you know, I found that I actually, like doing 24 and you move that to every day of the week, you can start to make shifts like that as you're learning what works for you, make the changes and make the week what you want it to be. But I applaud your 
um, starting point. And I think it's great that you're thinking of your priorities. It's gonna make it lifelong. And I think it sounds wonderful. Electric, I can't read my scribble handwriting. Electric something says, did I lose or do, do I, oh, I like, the, okay, so I like this question. Electric, and I'm sorry, I can't read my scribble handwriting, um, asks, do I close my eating window when I'm full at the last bite, or do I wait and close it just in case I wanna eat something else? I do not wait and close it in case I wanna eat something else. That would be detrimental to me because I will find something else to eat. So if I'm full and satisfied, literally that's when I close my eating window. By the way, this is baby lips. Cherry, my favorite. If I have three makeups that I can wear in a day, it's gonna be mascara, um, tinted moisturizer, and tint, or my tinted lip balm. But getting back to the question, I close my eating window when I'm full and satisfied. I always end it then. When I'm happy and I'm satisfied and I think perfect eating window, close it. Because guess what, if I say, oh, I'll leave it open for another hour, something else will come up in that hour, always. So I close it. And when it's closed, I'd say 95 times out of 100, it never opens again. That being said, this is when I almost did it, but I didn't. My son had a hit at a baseball game and he was so excited. He had been kind of struggling with hitting at the baseball games and we went and got him a milkshake. I was tempted to get a milkshake, but the thing is, I didn't really want a milkshake. I just wanted to celebrate with him. And I thought, I can still celebrate. I'm still making a big deal out of this. I don't need the milkshake. But if I wanted the milkshake in that point, I would have just adjusted. You can, on my watch, on my app, I can adjust the time. So even if I close it at 5.50 and then at 7.20, I end up getting a milkshake and I'm done with it at 7.30, I can just go in and edit my end time. It's not a big deal and I don't stress about it. Again, I still will get my 18 hour minimum after that time ends, I do that. Obviously not during the June challenge because I only have an hour, but normal day as soon as i'm satisfied as soon as i'm full last bite i end it i just get it done with and most of the time it stays there because if i leave it open just in case just in case will always happen because i like food and i find it <laughs> i feel like i maybe made a mistake with this one but it says mr i so mr i if i said that wrong i'm sorry but mr i says how to slowly work up to your 4 p.m eating window that's his goal um, but he's having a hard time hitting it. So I think you answered your own question slowly. So if you haven't read Fast Feast Repeat, I highly suggest it because she gives a lot of ways about like easing into it. And I am one of those people that doesn't really ease into things. So I just did it. I said 18 hours every day, I'm gonna do it. And I just started that way. However, if that is not you and you wanna start slowly, ask yourself, what can I do fairly easy? And say that's 1 p.m and it can be whatever, so just apply this to whatever. If it's 1 p.m., do 1 p.m. for a week. And then when 1 p.m. is super easy and it's like riding a bike, you can do it every day, no big deal, you don't think about it, it's your new lifestyle, bump it to 1.30. 30 minutes isn't a big deal. 30 minutes isn't that different. 30 minutes you can easily read a chapter of a book and pass the time and it's not life altering. Have a glass of water in that time frame. You know, do something short that's gonna get it. Once 1.30 becomes your new norm, move to two. Keep doing that. It doesn't have to be fast. I don't know how old you are. I'm praying that you're an adult. Intermittent fasting is not for children, but if you're an adult, you've spent most of your life not fasting. So there's no race to become a perfect faster. There's no such thing as a perfect faster. If it takes you four months to work up to 4 p.m., but then you're happily and committed at 4 p.m. and you feel really good and you've adjusted, what's the big deal if it takes four months? There is none, it's, it's not a big deal. So allow yourself that. So I would start wherever you're comfortable, do that regularly. Bump it by half an hour, do that until you're really comfortable with that one and just keep bumping it by half an hour. I think that's what maybe Jen says in her book, she might even say 15 minute increments. If you need to do it at 15 minute increments, do it. It's not a race, it's not a big deal but that's how I would do it. If you have a hard time bridging the gap, a fresh drink, something new, something distracting, maybe every single time you're trying the new half an hour time is when you have a podcast, watch a Netflix show, do something maybe even ritualistic. Like you've always wanted to watch Breaking Bad and you never made the time for it. But as soon as you get that new time frame, in that time, you get to look forward to trying a new show, which probably 1 p.m. isn't the time that a lot of people can watch a new TV show, 
But you, you get the idea. Listen to a new podcast or turn on music that you like and listen to your five favorite songs. Make a playlist. Do something that bridges the gap that you look forward to. And it's almost going to be something that you look forward to doing at that point. But you can ease into it slowly. You can adjust slowly. Or you can rip off the band-aid like I did and just tell yourself, this is going to suck for two weeks, but we're going to do it. That's how I did it. Um, but it's not what everyone's personality does well with. Okay, so I'm just kind of like not even paying attention and putting, I bought a bunch of these mascaras at Aldi. I also have a Maybelline mascara that I like, but I wanna use these mascaras that I bought in clearance. The thing I don't like about this Aldi mascara is I can't replenish it and I do like it, but they only sell it at a certain point. I bought all of the ones on clearance, but once they're gone, I'm not gonna be able to buy them again and I'll be back to my Maybelline but that's fine. I don't buy expensive mascara. Um, if you ever notice me buying a very expensive mascara, start looking at what who sponsored me. I'm just kidding. Okay, I don't know what that is. My eyes look green with this robe. I have, my parents both have very blue eyes, but my mom is green in it. And when I wear green, my eyes look green. I don't normally look at myself this, I feel like I'm like trying to pay attention to not flashing you guys and doing my makeup and not being out of frame. So I feel like I'm looking at myself much more than I normally do. Okay, Purple 37, I love this question because we must be uh, mutual moms. It says, how do you deal with tiredness such as uh, kids, poor sleep, you know, being a mom of three, I don't always get good sleep, um, which can lead to poor decision making. That is where time is my friend. I am very, very committed to I'm fasting or I'm not and when I'm fasting, I am not eating. So that means buttloads of coffee when I'm really tired. Coffee is very much like a comfort item to me and it does make me feel better when I'm really tired. I also just lean into it. If I'm tired and I need to be lazy, I'll be lazy. If I'm not as productive as I need to be or I generally am that day or want to be that day because I'm tired, I lean into it, but I don't go to food anymore. When I wasn't fasting, it definitely was something like, Oh, I'm so tired and I'd go get a sausage McGriddle on school drop off and it would make me feel better, but it never made me feel more energetic. That's for sure. So fasting has really allowed me to shape different habits. When I am tired or I don't sleep well, um, lately it's been the puppy, not the kids. I was sleeping on the dog bed in front of the crate for two weeks straight. That's not fun when you're five foot 10 and used to a king size bed, but I did it and I was really tired, but I never relied on food to get me through coffee and other things, being lazy, not being as productive, like letting myself rest when I have to. But fasting allows me to focus on other items other than food because I have no choice. I do not give myself a choice. My 18 hour minimum is my commitment to myself. And it was something that I really had to like work hard to get to be a commitment. But now it's second nature. It really is honestly something I don't think about. I, I don't, I'm not tempted to not fast because I've been doing it so long and I feel so good. The other really awesome thing is I don't feel as draggy as I used to because I think I get much better sleep now that I fast than when I wasn't a faster. My sleep quality has increased so I feel better even with less sleep if that makes sense. That's where I'm at. So the bottom line, having a background as a faster and just naturally not eating most of the day, I no longer turn to it as a crutch. Same with not even fatigue, but emotions. I used to gain weight every single time my daughter had surgery. It was literally a given. I just knew I would gain. And I don't do that anymore because most of the day I have to find other ways to deal with my emotions. I have to go on a walk. I have to pray, read the Bible, read different books. Uh, I mean, no. I got into drawing on my iPad different things that were like therapeutic that weren't turning to food. Fresh cup of coffee always is one of my therapies. I just had to because I wasn't eating and I'm committed to fasting. I'm putting highlighter on. I'm still using my old palette just to try to get like to not waste these. Eventually I'm gonna probably give it to my daughter for her. <laughs> she loves special effects. I'll just let her have that the rest of these for that and then I'll move to my new guy. I have no idea if I do highlighter right, but I like shimmer. I just like to shine. Next question, gotta flip my paper here. 
Ben Starr asks, do the benefits of apple cider vinegar outweigh the benefits of fasting? So I am not a big apple cider vinegar like knowledge person. The biggest time that I use it, and I, I honestly wish I would do this every day, I just forget until after I've opened my eating window. I need to get in the habit of it. I haven't done it. I like to take apple cider vinegar before I start eating to help my blood glucose. I do NutriSense, continuous glucose monitor, little plug if you wanna take a survey, it does help me personally. And it's below, it, you learn about NutriSense, it's no money, you just learn about what NutriSense can do for you. But I like to test my glucose and doing apple cider vinegar can help you to eliminate some of the blood, blood sugar spikes from foods. and. So to me, I don't, I've never used apple cider vinegar for anything other than that. And that's in your eating window. So I don't really know what the benefits of it would be outside of your eating window because I'm just not familiar. I've never really read up on it. I've only applied it to my eating window when I'm eating. And I've tested it like have a donut, scan, see what the results are, have apple cider vinegar and the donut test, see what the results are. And it definitely makes a difference, but that's in your eating window. So I don't know of any benefits that would outweigh the benefits of fasting. And honestly, I'm not interested enough to find out. So I have never done it in a fast. I don't know what the benefits would be while you're fasting, but I personally like fasting so much that I'm not even like curious what it would do. So I don't know, and I'm sorry. I do think it has merit, and from what I've tested, definitely worth having before you eat. I just gotta remember to do it before I eat. Another question I don't have a lot of information or anything to say, um, Karen's wondering why she gets heartburn when she drinks water. I have no idea. I am very, very grateful. I do not deal with heartburn. I had one of my three pregnancies that I had heartburn and I thought it was awful. And I thought, how do people deal with this on a regular basis? I do not have heartburn. I've never dealt with it, so I don't know and I'm really sorry. Karen also asked what my favorite teas are. My absolute favorite is getting iced tea from Panera. That's really like a cheat because I don't make it. They, it's just tea, there's no added flavors. It's really good and I love to have it while I'm fasting. Only in the summer is when I drink iced tea because it's very refreshing. And then when I'm halfway done with it, I just fill it with water and then I still really like it. I'm not a huge hot tea drinker though. I like, there's one called Candy Cane Lane. It's like a creamy peppermint tea. I like that when I'm sick, but I don't like it enough to buy it and drink it regularly. And because it's flavored, I would only have it in my eating window. I'm not a huge tea drinker though. I drink green tea when I make iced tea at home. That is what I'll do, green tea. I'm, I'm probably gonna say this wrong because I can't read my handwriting. Uh, Tanyal, Tamiao, Falana. I can't tell if I put an M, an A, an N, an I, or a U. It looks like Falana is at the end. How long on intermittent fasting to lose weight? So I kind of touched base on this already. It really depends. For me, I was instantaneous. In my first 28 days, I lost four pounds and then I lost the rest of my weight to where I am now in about five months. My dad, however, took about six months for him to start seeing weight loss, but it didn't take six months to adjust, to feel good, to find joy, but the weight loss wasn't immediate for him. It really is different for different people. And I really think it all depends on your habits, your metabolic rate, what your body needs to heal before it starts to lose weight. There's so many differences person to person. I think the best expectation is to adjust, to get used to the lifestyle, and then you'll find out when you lose weight, but it's not the same across the board. And I think that is something that's really hard is to start and to expect to lose weight the same as me or other people. And it's just not gonna be the reality. Like we're all individuals and you may lose weight at a different pace than someone else. And if you go into it expecting that, it's not gonna be a disappointment. It's gonna meet expectations. So that's my advice. Okay, before I get to Sabria's question, I'm gonna put on my perfume. This is Clinique Heart, or Clinique Happy Heart. It's my favorite perfume. It's like Clinique Heart, but it's very floral and it's very mild, but I love it. Mm, it smells so good. Sabria asks, is it common to lose too much weight? And I don't know about common because I don't have a ton of experience other than my own. I haven't heard from many people that they've lost too much weight. I know my dad's wife, so my stepmom technically, she felt like she lost too much weight, so she opened her eating window. So she, she was restricting maybe too much, and she's already a thin person, but she was doing it for health benefits, and she opened her eating window. She's the only person that I know personally that has hit that point. I honestly was like, 
losing weight at a very nice rate. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna get to 140 in no time, which is where I wanted to be, which is where I was before I got married. And then I hit about 150, 147 to 150. I ain't losing weight without doing something drastic. I just stopped. I am in a very comfortable place. I, even though I was losing weight at one to two pounds a week consistently, without doing something like keto, I'm not losing any more weight or dieting or restriction. And I'm not doing that. You guys know I'm not gonna do that unless it's something I just don't wanna eat. I hit this point where it was like, nope, you're good. You mentioned you wanna keep your curves. I unfortunately didn't get to pick what curves I wanted. I lost most of my chest, but I've always had a small chest. I still got my hips and butt, gay. I'd like to redistribute, but I can't. But I did hit a point where I stopped losing weight even though I'm maintaining the same lifestyle. I haven't opened my eating windows. I haven't changed anything. So I'm doing the same thing pretty much that I was when I was losing weight. It's just what it is. Aflac wants to know, how do I build muscle uh, while fasting? and which fasting method is best. So I think first of all, the best fasting method is gonna vary person to person. And that's why I think reading Fast Feast Repeat is a really good idea if you're new to fasting. Um, Jen does a great job outlining different ways that you can employ intermittent fasting. You can do 16 eight, you can do 24, you can do two meals a day, one meal a day, you can do alternate day fasting. And it really outlines different ones for you to consider. And then think of what fits my life. What is gonna allow me to do what's important to me in my lifestyle? She's like hopping around bone to bone. So I don't think what works for me is gonna be the same for you. So I personally, I need time to be my restriction, not myself. I need time to be my restriction, not rules. So that means shorter eating windows are good for me because I can only do so much in a short eating window, but it can still be satisfactory. Those are my priorities. I like to eat every day. So having an eating window every single day is important to me. And then when I choose to have a longer fast, it's the one off, it's not my daily. When I did the ADF for an entire month, I missed eating every single day. So I try things and I see what works for me and I build the perfect plan for me. That's really what I encourage. I do think OMAD is what I would consider the best. You eat every day, you're fasting most of the time, which means you're very good at being in a fasted state. And then you have the freedom to really enjoy that perfect meal. Very rarely when I wasn't fasting did I have so many meals every day that were all, woo, like awesome. If I had an awesome meal, it was usually one of them and then the other ones were like fillers. Well, remove the fillers, enjoy your meal every day and that's pretty satisfactory. So I honestly love OMAD. That's the one that I would suggest to anyone looking for the perfect. But that's because it's based on my preferences of eating every day and having a full, satisfactory, large meal. That might not be what's important to you, but I highly encourage, read Fast Feast Repeat, become acclimated with all the different offerings, and you can build it. It can be different for you. I do alternate day fasting on occasion, and I like to do it once every week or two, but that's not my normal, but I still like to have it as a tool. But that's because I've played around and I've learned. So I really think that learning what's best for you is gonna be based on your preferences. But if I had to pick my perfect one, it's OMAD. Oh um, also, how do you build muscle fasting? I just wanna show you, okay, so I know it's not like super big, but I have biceps and I'm more muscular than I was prior to not fasting and I've done nothing. Fasting actually increases your human growth hormone production, which is obviously good for muscle building. I don't do workouts much. I'm trying to become better at it. I've actually gotten plans and I have a video about that. I will link below um, that I'm gonna try integrating more as my puppy allows me more freedom in my house. But I have naturally become more muscular just by fasting. I think because I've spent so much time in a fasted state, I'm burning fat and human growth hormone increases Again, you can read about that in Fast Feast Repeat. I'm not a super scientific person, but I think if you want to build muscle while fasting, obviously in your eating window, you want to focus on making sure you're getting lots of protein, not something that I'm the best at. Like what workouts work for you? I would definitely work out while fasting because that is what feels best for me, but it's not an area that I'm like the best at. I don't purposely work to build muscle. Strength training while fasting and getting a lot of protein in your eating window would be where I would start if I was looking to build muscle. But just know, human growth hormone, part of fasting. Look at me, look how strong I am. Uh, okay, this is the last question. It's from ASMR Adventure and Yulia said yes, answer this. And then it goes back to the other question about binge eating. First of all, I do wanna say, Intermittent fasting is not suggested if you have 
or have a history with eating disorders. That is my understanding because it can trigger disordered eating if you have it in your past. Be very careful or cautious if you approach intermittent fasting and you have a history with a true binge eating disorder. I've never had like a diagnosed eating disorder. I don't think I've ever had an eating disorder. I definitely have had disordered eating, but it's not something that I've like needed treatment for or I went down a horrible path that was hard to get out of. With that being said, I definitely overeat or would binge at times. I hear about binge eating, like a true disorder, or you see it on shows or something, and it was nothing like that. So I don't wanna compare myself to someone with like a true eating disorder and out of disrespect, I just think comparing what I've gone through to them is probably not the same. But I'm just making sure she's being good, sorry. When I think of dieting and things like I couldn't eat donuts, donuts are always what I go to because I love donuts, but there's a local place, Sweetwater's Donut Mill, and I would have like a feeling I couldn't eat them. Well, then when we got donuts finally because I allowed myself, I would, it wouldn't be unreasonable for me to eat three when I finally ate them. And then I'd feel like crap or I'd, I'd be dieting and sick of it and I'd say screw it I just want to eat good food again and then I would make up for all that I didn't eat every single eating window and I'd eat too much of things that's like my idea of binging for me and then when I started intermittent fasting as soon as I opened my eating window watch out of your food because anything that was available and that was usually junk was available like because it was ready prepared right there I would eat whatever was available. There was no discernment. There was no like what is gonna sound good to me. And I just went with it. What happened is I didn't feel the best or I wouldn't have room for dinner that I actually did take time to make because I ate too much when I opened my eating window. But again, those kind of behaviors that make you not feel good or don't allow you to enjoy the rest of your eating window are gonna shape how you approach your eating window. There's a great book, Appetite Correction by Dr. Burt Herring. I definitely suggest you eat that if you feel like you have these binge tendencies. And especially if you're a new faster, I have found, and in so many fasters that, that I talk to, they find the same thing. When you're adjusting to intermittent fasting and you open your eating window, it's very common to have the vacuum effect of eating everything. However, it's something that you're going to grow out of. And that's what happened to me. And I think most people find that you aren't gonna approach your eating window the same way six months from now, even two months from now, or six weeks from now, as you did when you became a faster. You're adjusting, you're learning. But if every single day you open your eating window and you reach for all the things that are easily available or packaged snacks and you, you become full and then you can't eat the dinner that you prepared, the next time you're less likely to do that. And then when you don't do it and you have this enjoyable eating window where you had your window opener that you planned and then you had your dinner and you got to enjoy it and you close your eating window and you're very satisfied, then also mold your behavior like, wow, that was really great. I enjoyed food. I enjoyed my eating window and I don't feel sick afterwards. Let's do more of that. It's a very natural process and Appetite Correction talks about it, correcting your appetite. Fasting is one of the best ways to correct your appetite according to Dr. Burt Herring and he gives other tips. Really enjoyed the book. But I do think that overeating and binging happen when you learn to fast. You open your eating window and you're like, finally, it's here, let me eat, I gotta, I gotta do it, I've been waiting for this all day. But you grow out of it. That's been my experience and I think a lot of fasters, that's been their experience as well. So that's my experience. If you have true binge eating, I am not qualified and I don't even wanna pretend to be qualified to talk to you about it. I hope you seek professional advice. And again, fasting is not meant for someone that has a history with disordered eating unless you're doing it like under supervised care and it's been a while since you're disordered eating. I've never had an eating disorder and I don't come to any discussion of binge as someone with binge eating disorder, truly. I'm talking about overeating. I'm talking about having more portions that made me feel comfortable, but not a true binge eating disorder. Well, my hair, again, I'm just gonna leave it. It needs to be blow dried. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate all the questions. And one of them was about apple cider vinegar. And if you wanna know what I was talking about in testing apple cider vinegar in my eating window, you can check out this video right here. It's a lot of fun. And there's other glucose hacks talking about blood sugar. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao, Don and ciao.